Welcome to episode three of the Annabelle set. We are back for another week and the boss is back in the chair, but it's a hot seat because uh, Rob did a very good job last week, both in uh, his interviewing and also his tipping. You caught up with how well he did, did you? Yeah, he uh, every time one crossed the line in that <laughs> second or third place at big odds, he was like, yeah, tip that, tip there that. Go. Very good. Um, so he was pretty chuffed with himself and uh, yeah, I suppose bit of pressure on me this weekend now. Absolutely, yeah. There's already enough pressure on you with the massive week at re- racing it is, but now you've got to tip winners as well. But we'll do our best as we always do. And just on that, is this the busiest you've ever been in your life? There's a lot going on, isn't there? Yeah, it's busy. Um, I suppose, actually, funnily enough, you know, now that Faulkner Park's not in the Caulfield Cup, it's slightly taken the pressure. You know, often you're really 50-50 with your time up and down. Um, but it's it's mainly been, obviously, we've got Fancy Man possibly as an emergency He's possibly going to get a run, but really it's now just concentrating on on Ramwick this Saturday and pretty exciting day. Yeah. Um, basically, we've got a, most of our, our Best big guns lining up, running. Yeah. So Can really you remember exciting. having a day when you've had so much at stake and so many runners in amazing races? No, not really. Um, mm. I guess a couple of years ago we had uh, three heading towards the Cox Plate, but a couple of those <laughs> fell by the wayside, but... Uh, yeah, I think we've got a bit more depth in the stable now. And, um, yeah, it's nice to have a across all the feature races on Saturday. We've, we've you know, got a couple of nice chances. Mm, we're going to have a great look at all of those big races. But before we do, we just quickly look at the week that was. It's a pretty short and sharp one today. But the first topic is Generation Next, I've called it. And so we talked about it before, these long-priced horses that did pretty well for you guys on the weekend. We've got Yoshi Nobu first up in the Roman console. Let's watch the run here. Of course, Switzerland in the cool, more blue colours. Goes on to win the race, but here's Yoshinobu, Yoshinobu trucking up in the red cap and runs on really well. You must be very happy with his run considering how lightly raced it is. And Switzerland was one of the main chances, possibly, or not one of the main chances, but was going to be a good uh, chance in the Everest. Yeah, exactly. I was really happy with, with him. We threw him in the deep end. He was coming off the back of a, a Newcastle, um, I think it was a benchmark 64, mm-hmm. and he'd, he'd won a, a Wyong maiden before that. So really threw him in the deep end, but you know we only did that because... You know, we know he can gallop and he's a lovely, big, strong horse. Um, so I thought the way the race shaped probably didn't suit him either. They really hammered along in front. Mm. Um, I think it was Adam Hieronymus on that horse. They really went a good clip and, and looked to really quicken up from the 600. And we were leading the, the chasing pack up to that horse. So for an inexperienced horse to do that and then still stick on was, I thought, impressive. Um, in hindsight, I wonder if we'd gone to the inside of that horse, we might have... Um, held on for, for second. Mm. Um, we saw Switzerland make up ground up the inside. I think we thought that ground might be inferior, but uh, look, the winner was too good for us. But I think with the lack of experience we had and the way the race panned out, I always think that's you know gives a horse plenty of promise going forward. And where do you think his level's at? He's written Tycoon Colt. Obviously, you want to aim as high as possible, but do you think he can get up to that, that elite level? Well, he's, he's certainly bred to. He's got a, a very nice pedigree. And physically, he's probably the, the biggest... Um, sort of scopiest three-year-old in the stable. He's quite a tall, imposing horse. Um, but while he's a cult with the amount of upside that there is, we'll certainly be having a throw at the stumps. Um, Osmosis ran third in the Roman console last year. I and actually looked to... that up okay. and then uh, went on to win the Coolmore. Cool yeah. We'd need to lift again, but um, I think the plan with him will be to get him down to Melbourne, give him a jump out down the straight uh, on the next Friday. Mm-hmm. Just a quiet one because fitness levels are good um but more just to have a look because sometimes they can uh, be quite green down the straight and then if we're happy with him um look to to see if we can get us a, a spot in the coolmore that's exciting all right let's keep moving so let's go to firm agreement in the gloaming let's bring the replay up as well so in the triple crown colors up on the fence the all red runs on really well i'll let you take it away from here yeah another inexperienced horse having just his third start uh, look, the winner was very good. Um, we probably crystal clear. Our horse rolled along in front, probably a bit too quick, and maybe set it up for some of these back markers. You can see Swift Falcon really moving into it late as well. But uh, I thought our horse travelled reasonably close to the speed, which was hot and stuck on very well. I just love the way he lowers himself. He 
sort of dips his nose out and really lowers and extends. Yep. And he's just pretty honest. So the horse doesn't give much away at home. He's not a particularly flash workhorse, but um, all of his runs have been quite impressive. So he'll press on now to the spring champion. He'll need to improve again to, to reverse the, the form with the couple of horses that finished ahead of him. But um, maybe ridden a fraction quarter up to 2,000. And yeah. Tom feels like he's a horse that loves chasing. Yes. Um, so... If we can try and have to keep something in front of us for a bit longer, that might be the key for him. Yeah, it's a Group 1 race as well, of course. So, yeah, it's exciting. Um, so let's go and have a look at this multi-magic. So we talked about Rob tipping four four horses all each way and them all running the place. So one of the punters on the den took advantage of what he said and uh, pretty pretty good to look at, isn't it? So 50-buck bet, uh, Four four leg place multi. They all got up, and he collected twelve thousand four hundred. I know. Well, Rob so. looked at that and said, "Why on earth did I put fifty dollars <laughs> on?" Yeah. Um, so um, anyway, it's a fantastic season. That's what this show's all about. So uh, yeah, I'll try Very and find good. a few more. Try and hopefully we can do it again. Yeah. Um, and just finishing off the week that was stable mail. Anything happening? So you, you mentioned Faulkner Park before. He's up in Sydney. Is he? How how is he going? Yeah, got him back to Sydney. He just he just wasn't going all that well. In Melbourne and his gallops, just wanting to to lean in a bit and just get a little bit sore through his back. And mm -hmm. um, I just thought we were, you know, I suppose running out of time. I didn't want to keep per, per, persevering um, because he was, yeah, he just for whatever reason wasn't firing that way. So we've got him up to Sydney and I got Tyler to come and gallop him yesterday. And lo and behold, he's gone back to, mm -hmm. certainly in his work, to what he normally is. He was right. absolutely sh dead straight in his work and... Yeah, action looked great. So um, the plan with him, so long as we're still happy with him, will be to, to run him again in Sydney and that might be in the Craven Plate next weekend. Okay, very good. And you said you were trying to buy some tried horses at a French sale. It might have been the Arc sale a couple of weeks back by the next Melbourne Cup winner or anything. How did we go there? Did we get, did we get one? Yeah, well, we've had a few sales. We tried yesterday at the two-year-old sales and the filly I wanted made a million dollars. Wow. It was a, a cult I liked that made half a million and... We didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't have the firepower, but we did manage to pick one up in France, um, a gelding called Chartwell. Uh, I've already got a horse in the stable called Chartwell by Churchill, and this horse is also by Churchill. Um, hopefully, the new Ch Chartwell is a bit quicker than the existing one. Mm -hmm. um, but he he lands out here, I think first week of December, and he looks a proper stare. He's sort of Group Two, Group Three, um, placing over over twenty four hundred meter type trips. So he's a horse that potentially targets a race like the, the Sydney Cup or the Brisbane Cup. And is he fully sold or can people get into him if they want? I think he's fully sold um, but worth getting in touch with OTI because they, they took they do it, yeah. um, half the horse as well and they may have a bit of availability. So cool. uh, he looks a nice horse if you can get into him. Very good. All right, now it's time to move to the feature races. Massive slate of feature races and we're going to start with the 2024 Everest where you, of course, have sunshine in Paris. And what we're going to do this morning, uh, this afternoon is we're going to look at the track work from a Tuesday morning. So what you got up on the screen here at the moment is Sunshine in Paris on the inside and Lady Laguna on the outside. They're galloping at Warwick Farm. Why don't you tell us about how this gallop unfolded for Sunshine in Paris? Yeah, it was an important piece of work, their last piece. You try and get them on early on the best bit of ground. Um, so this is on the course proper and we'd had, um, I think, about 18 mils of rain. So it was nice and soft, which is good. You know, you want soft ground for the last gallop. I was thinking you're not going to be jarred up, but that was a nice bit of work from them both. Lady Laguna can get a bit aggressive in her work, so we normally sit off with her just to mm -hmm. keep her relaxed, whereas Sunshine in Paris doesn't matter inside or outside. She she always works pretty well. So, um, yeah, both uh, regular jocks on them, and um, they were both smiling coming back in, so that's all you can ask for. Great, and so uh, Lady Laguna will be in the Sydney Stakes, and so we're going to look at the Sydney Stakes after we talk about the Everest, but let's bring the market up for the Everest. There it is. Uh, it's a very open Everest. I think it's a cracking field. And you guys are a little bit the forgotten horse. There you are at ten dollars. You're obviously super impressive in the Shiraco where you beat Jolie Star, um, and she somehow found a way to favoritism. Yeah, I don't know how we nearly double her price. We beat her absolutely fair and square. Um, I think the chats maybe she was a bit flat second up. So um, obviously wary of her with J Mac on. Good stable, good barrier, um, but. I think we're slipping under the radar a bit, which I quite like. Mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't be any happier with her. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, oh, she, 
I think we've got her as good as we've ever oh, had good. her. She's ready yeah. to explode. And why exactly do you say that? Why do you think you got her better? What, what's she doing and showing you to make you say that? Well, first up, she was in the Scirocco. She just wasn't quite ready. We were, we'd have been happy to run a nice second to Jolly mm. Star. We didn't need to, you know, attract the attention of any slot holders because we've already had a slot. Um, so it was just about getting her underway. And and she won, she won that race. It definitely wasn't as wound up as she was 12 months ago for the same race. Um, and that was, you know, just going to bring her on, allow us to give her a few quiet weeks, trial her and then be peaking for our grand final. And that's exactly how I feel it's gone. Mm. Um, physically, she didn't look great in the Scirocco. She had a hairy coat on her. But now she's really muscled up. She's got a beautiful coat on her, beautiful skin. Um, and she's just woken up a bit as well. Okay. She's always been quite a straightforward horse. She's never really been a horse that pulls or anything, but... Even in her trial last Tuesday, she's straight out on the bunny out of the gates. Um, Tommy was looking for cover just so that she didn't do too much. And um, she just seems a bit more switched on. Yeah. Um, and she's still pretty lightly raced, but she's just never ran a bad race. And um, obviously we know her very well. And I just, just the little signs you get from horses, I just feel that... You know, right now, today, she's she's just as good as we've ever had her. How yeah, good. And have you thought about tactics where you want to settle with her and stuff? Have you spoken to Tommy much about that? I haven't um, I haven't spoken to Tommy. All he texted me at the barrier draw last night and uh, he said happy with eight, mainly because 11 was left and we were a bit worried we might get 11. Um, but barriers are so crucial. Yeah. Um, I think you'll, you'll find out probably after four or five races whether barrier eight's a good... You know, if the rail's on fire, then you probably don't want to be an eight. But um, it's been a bit of rain around, and she's a you know she's always been a horse that's got um, yeah she's got a fantastic, powerful finish on her. So I think from there, at least if he he can get a bit of clear room in the straight, mm -hmm. um, which he's probably more likely to to from that sort of draw than an inside draw, then that just gives her an opportunity to to wind up. So it'll just depend where where all the other horses go. You know, Lady of Camelot, they rode a bit quieter in the trial. Mm. Um, uh, so I'm hearing they may ride her a bit quieter, but I sp maybe that was before they drew 11. Mm. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where they go with her. But there's a few horses that you'd imagine will go forward, I and me um, and, and Storm Boy. Uh, and a couple of the chances have drawn outside of us. You know, two horses I thought were real dangers or are real dangers are Bella Nipotina and I Wish I Win, and they're outside of us. So... Um, happy to see them outside of us but you can build a case for all of the horses but mm. um i think as long as tommy can get her in a nice spot i'd i'd say midfield yeah. probably be nice that's normally where she is um then that would probably be ideal and she sustained such a great sprint when she beat jolly star in the shiraka would you be confident that if tommy lit her up at the 300 or something you might be able to overcome the leaders or just keep that momentum up the whole way and keep going? Yeah, I mean, as, as confident as you can be against this calibre of horses. Sure. But, yeah, that she has, you know, she runs negative splits, uh, which not many horses can do. And she, as you said, she can just sustain a really, really long run. Yeah. Um, so if you have to get on your bike early to get into a into to clear clear air, um, I don't think she's the sort of horse that's going to peak on her run because... She's a group one winner over 1,400. So we know this is going to be a high-pressure 1,200-metre race. Ramwick suits her. It's a stiff 1,200. It's going to be, it's going to be a high-pressure race, you mm. know, for the money it's at. They normally are. Um, but the nice thing with her, she probably she doesn't rely in a lot of these horses that maybe sit midfield or a bit further back like she can. They rely on a really strong tempo up front to, to overcome that. But she can sprint, I think, off any any sort of tempo. Mm -hmm. um, so even if they weren't going all that quick, I'm, I'm pretty confident she's the sort of mare that can can sprint, out sprint a lot of horses. Who's the biggest danger in the field outside of your horse? Oh, I said, sort of, where do I begin? There's so <laughs> many of them. Um, You're only led one. Oh, uh, I do. I think the other horse slightly overlooked, but again, probably because she's so unexposed. I suppose at this level still, but I, I think Steffi Magnetica from sure. that draw, yep. I thought her run was huge. Um, probably should have won um, mm. the the shorts, yes. and she looks to me like she's gone to another level. So, um, yeah, a few of them, but I, I reckon Steffi Magnetica is uh, one that I would fear a little. And when her draw came as six, I thought mm, would have liked you to draw wide. Yeah, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. All right, well, best of luck on Saturday with that race. We're very excited for you and I look forward to watching it. Time to move on to the Sydney Stakes. We don't need to watch Lady Laguna's trial again or 
uh, Gallup on Tuesday morning because we've already seen it, but pretty hot field. And I was interested to see that Southport Tycoon accepted for this race when it was also nominated for the Silver Eagle, but you were saying you're not allowed to accept for both races. Is that right? Yeah, I would have liked to because I was keen to have a look at this race with Ostraka as well and go where we thought we drew better. But um, yeah, there is a ruling on this race um, that if you accept in the Sydney Stakes, you can't then accept um, in, the, in the Silver Eagle. I'm not yeah. sure why. I think maybe because the something to do with obviously the emergencies come out of this race yes. for, the, for the Everest. Everest yes. um, but uh, I was, I suppose, from Ostraka's point of view, I was, I was pleased to see um, Southport Tycoon and Arkansas Lad go this way rather than the Silver Eagle because they were, I thought, real dangers in the race. Yeah, but Lady Laguna, so she's first up basically, hasn't had a run for quite a while, right? Eight weeks or something. Yeah, which that in itself doesn't worry me, but Barrier 18 is a, a bit of a bummer. Yeah. Um, particularly, you know, she's been off for a little while. She's, she's probably 90% there, but she's not fully, fully wound up so you know do you do you bang her out of the gates from 18 and burn across um which she can do or do you ride a quart but trying to you know you've almost got to go all the way forward or all the way back from from a draw that wide that bigger field yeah and hard to spot good horses that far away but is she forward enough to go forward i don't know so i've got a bit of thinking to do about that race yeah. um and tyler's gonna have to probably Work his magic a bit, but a couple of the other chances. Think about it. He can't seem to ever draw a gate. King of Sparta, climbing star. You know, a lot of the other horses have drawn um, sticky gates as well. Yeah, cool. All right. Just before we close off those sprint races, we should have said that Sunshine in Paris is actually an official Annabelle set tip, isn't it? In the Everest, she is. Okay, very good. All right, let's move on, and we're going to go now to the King Childs. We got two great rough chances. We've got My Oberon and Amelia's Jewel, and we're going to watch them galloping on. Tuesday morning, we've got my Oberon on the inside, Amelia's Jewel on the outside. Take it away and tell us how you saw this. Yeah, really good work. Um, my Oberon's notoriously a, an average worker, so you know, doesn't worry me here that Amelia's Jewel does look uh, the better of the two, but that's actually, believe it or not, quite good work for my Oberon. Mm -hmm. um, both horses, great. Um, my Oberon, I thought, was terrific in the, in the Epsom. The draw just got the better of us. Um, we rode for, we rode for luck. He was a bit the same as I suppose Lady Laguna's going to be in. Do you go all the way forward or all the way back? Can't really win top weight going all the way back. Probably don't have the speed to go all the way forward. Let's just hope we can jam into a spot. Yeah. And um, we couldn't. It wasn't Nash's fault. We we tried. We just ended up out on a limb with no cover, with the top weight. So I thought to stick on as he did. He mm -hmm. only got beaten. Yeah. I think two it's and a bit lengths was was a huge run. Um, he's just so honest. Uh, so hopefully he can just have a, a better run in transit. He's pretty fit. He wouldn't have blown a candle out after that work. Uh, yeah. And Amelia's Jewel, uh, she's another one, a bit like Sunshine in Paris. It's hard to explain sort of why, but I feel like she's she's just really improved in coming to. And uh, look, whether she can win, I don't know. The, the top two in the market are, are very good horses. Up? There it is. But um, I just feel like she's going to, run a much better race than her first two runs, which which were good runs. Mm. Um, but I think up to the mile, high pressure race, I, I think right up her alley. What do you anticipate Pride of Jenny will do? Do you think they'll, she'll get a long way out in front or – and will you think about it? Will you – you know, does Pride of Jenny sort of get in your mind and you think about how you're going to have to deal with it? A little bit. Um, I mean, who's going to chase her? They, they seem to – everyone says the, the horse that's doing the donkey work leading her – Leading the field up to up to her is at a disadvantage. So, mm. um, but then that well, that's what happened in the Queen Elizabeth, isn't it? No one wanted to do it, and then she just got way too far. Way out too far. So, uh, look, I, I think uh, the jockeys have have probably got to yeah not let her get too far ahead. Um, but the, the amazing thing with Pride of Jenny is she just she does she breaks everyone's heart. She's yeah. got a higher cruising speed than any other horse, and she draws. You know, you're probably seeing Mr. Brightside's getting sick of. Sick. He probably thought Deny Knowledge was her the other day yeah, and he thought, yeah. oh, I can't be bothered because, yeah. you know, it, she drags horses out of their comfort zone. I don't, you know, I don't know that either of mine would want to be leading up the pack. I've seen a few articles and tweets about my Oberon might be the horse, but where, yeah. when have we ever seen my Oberon yeah. back up in that sort of really forward position? But there's just not that much maybe pressure. Z, I think Zugot, yeah. yeah, you know, maybe Chris, uh, I'm not saying he'll send her forward for Fangirl, but... He's he's nat she's naturally a horse on speed. So when I looked at the 
field, I thought, um, I actually thought she might be going to the invitation, but seeing her in this field, I thought maybe she's the horse that's going to be, um, yeah, leading the rest of them up to it. I, I don't know, uh, Major Beal's in there, is he on the other page yeah, he probably? Would, yeah, just out He's of another horse that can go forward as well, yeah. but um, it would be great if we could find another horse in Sydney at this level that's uh, got a similar can running you, style. Yeah, can we get Bo Rogue back? <laughs> yeah. Um, but you are so confident in your two horses that you're anointing them both each way, official Annabelle set tips, correct? I think they're both really good each way tips. And the ground, if, if we get the showers that may or may not come on Friday and if it's a, a soft track, uh, I give my Oberon a really big push. And if it's drying out, I'm going to give Amelia's Jewel a big push. I think, she, I think they're both flying. Very good. All right, let's move on to the Silver Eagle now. This is, of course, a lead up to the Golden Eagle, $10 million race, insane prize money. We're going to watch track work on Tuesday with two of the most informed horses in your stable. We've got Ostraka on the inside and we've got Port Lockroy on the outside. I'll let you take it away. Yeah, these two ran really well. Um, obviously in that in that race a couple of weeks ago, up to 1,300, certainly suits Port Lockroy. Uh, I think another 50 metres he wins the race. Uh, he did have less weight, of course, than Ostraka, but... Well, Stryk, he's, he's bidding for a fourth win in a row. He's a horse in form, but he's drawn the outside gate. Um, and bad gates are not ideal. Um, but he did draw wide two starts back. And we actually rode him quieter. And he showed a fantastic turn yeah. of foot. So uh, Blake Shin's on board. He's such a good tactician, Blake. He's he's probably the best flying, in the business flying. in terms of that. Yeah. So, yeah, his ride That's on exciting. Antino was yeah. phenomenal, wasn't it? So yeah. um, probably... a Leave it up to Blake. It's like he's always quick out of the gates, this horse. So you don't like those scenarios where you've told them to go back and then they ping out and then they're, you know, so I think you've got to ride him a bit on how he jumps. But, um, yeah, tricky draw. If we can get the right run, he's flying. Uh, and Port Lockroy, I just love this horse. Um, yep. Probably helps that I've got a share in him. Probably love <laughs> him a bit more. Um, normally means they're slow when I keep a bit of them. Um, but he drew such bad gates last campaign, finally drew a gate um, a few weeks ago and we could see we saw what he could do. So um, from the draw, he's got a better draw than Ostraka, of course, and I think he's a horse on the up. And you're going to anoint him an official Annabelle set each way tip again, Port Lockroy. I am. I would Ostraka if he drew a gate, but I'm just I'm going to go with Port Lockroy just, just due to the barriers. But Blake Shin on board Ostraka too. No one's more in form and... Handling things from difficult positions. So, yeah, he, Australia could easily. He could. And we lost, you know, Jason's ridden him the last two, but he was locked into to Kimochi. I'm sure she's favourite. I'm sure he yeah. would have chosen her anyway, but he was already committed to her. Um, but Blake won on him on the only ride he's had on him. So um, we were pretty chuffed to get him. Very good. All right, we're going to leave Sydney now. We're going to move down to Melbourne for the Caulfield Cup, one of the classics on the calendar. And you're a sp- a slight chance to get a runner in there, Fancy Man. Um, first emergency, a pretty rough chance. Why don't we watch Fancy Man's run in the Herbert Power? You also had gear up as well. You can see gear up in the yellow and sort of maroon trying to get into the running there. Fancy Man is back. It's number six coming into it now with the red sleeves. I'll let you take it away from here. Yeah, I thought he ran really well. He'd had a tough run first up um, in the naturalism, but... Uh, three weeks between runs, soft draw up to the 24. I thought this was a good run. Um, just around here, around here, I thought, oh, he's going to really run into it, but he just levelled out a little bit. The, the two in front had slightly lighter weights than him. Uh, but I thought that was a really solid return. He's, he came to us, we bought him for quite a lot of money from Europe, and he you know, he came to us with a big boom uh, and pretty good form. And I just haven't managed to probably get the best out of him. Uh-huh. Um, we did win a, the Queensland Cup with him. Um, I think that was 12 months ago. But I just, yeah, I've, he's been frustrating. But I feel like this prep, I know we've only had two runs back with him, but I feel like maybe he's acclimatised and going a lot better. So um, would love to sneak him in. Uh, he's got 50, 50 on his back. Mm. Uh, Ron Stewart, nice draw. <laughs> um, but we just need we need something to come out, which you know you hope you hope no one happen. else does happen. Yeah, but, but they all get does. trotted That's up, racing. you yeah. know. So yeah. um, it, it may happen, and if he does, he's got to be a rough hope. Yep. Um, we we ran uh, fourth in the race with Bois d'Argent last year. I think he was a hundred to one or or more, and and he had a, a low. I think he had fifty kilos and a low draw as well. So it's one of those races. If you can get a low draw, lightweight, 
and, and your horse makes his own luck on speed like he does, then you know you can you can run into the money. But hard race to win. But a couple of the day, you know, Elias I thought was the one to beat and yep. got the outside gate. Buckaroo is he a query at the trip? A few people say he is. I, I don't know. You've got Joe Marrero on. I, he's a good horse. Um, but uh, the horse I think's the the horse that I, I would be backing is Zardozzi. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like Zardozzi as well. Um, it's firmed up a lot, Zardozzi as well. It's it's getting shorter and shorter. Andrea. A lot. Yeah. A lot of people um, are starting to agree with you. All right. Well, that's fantastic. And just before we close up Caulfield, if you want to go to Caulfield on Saturday, you can go for free because of our friends at the Melbourne Racing Club. They've given us lots of free tickets, and we will put the link to that into the description. Pretty cool, eh? You get to go to the Caulfield Cup for free. Sounds really right, cool, it? yeah. yeah. So um, if you want to do that, go and hit the link in the description. You can do that. And I think that brings us to the all-important time for the Annabelle set. So why don't you grab your piece of paper, maybe just quickly skip through your, your few tips that were in the feature race, and then you've got a couple more for us. Um, yes, so Sunshine in Paris, she's number one. Yep. Number one tip, <laughs> uh, ridiculous price. And I think she'll probably shorten. Yeah. Uh, can't split Amelia's Jewel and my Oberon, so it just depends on the ground. Um, obviously wet, my Oberon, dry, Amelia. Uh, Port Lockroy in the Silver Eagle. Yep. And then we've got two runners in the Tari Cup on Friday, 100 grand race, big dance qualifier. Like this. Two horses, really hard to split on ability, um, but I'm going to go with I Am The Empire. He's drawn soft, drawn three. Okay. Um, Molly Fitzgerald on our home track, uh, good apprentice uh, who's actually coming to us, which is great. So hopefully she can ride a, a feature race winner for us. Um, Aristonis is in there as well uh, and a handy horse. He can win as well, but I'm just slightly giving I Am The Empire the nod just because of the barrier. Uh, my last tip is at Eagle Farm on Saturday, race 10, Kadal. Okay. Yeah, he's had three runs with us for three placings. A uh, little bit of a freshen between runs, I think three and a half weeks between runs. Uh, big weight, but Cody Collis takes a bit of weight off and... He's got a bit of an awkward draw, but I think there's a million emergencies, so hopefully yeah. he comes in a few. At a pretty good price. I think it was 6 or $7 when I looked, so we yep. like that. All right, well, um, best of luck on Saturday. We appreciate you coming in to spend some time with us today. Fantastic insight for everyone out there. I'm sure they really enjoy it. And um, everyone's cheering you on. You, you've worked incredibly hard to get to where you are now, so hopefully some of the rewards come your way on Saturday. So best of luck. And um, we'll see you back here next week. Thank or you. maybe Rob, just depends on how the tips go. So. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see how we go. Maybe Rob can come next week. But uh, if you might not spot us for a week if we win the I, hope, I hope so. I hope I can't find you somewhere <laughs> on the other side of the world because you've made so much money and you're so happy. So that would be a great result. Maybe we can Zoom you in on FaceTime from <laughs> be more than some, happy somewhere on the other side of the world. All right, best of luck. Thank you for coming in. Thank you very much. Cheers. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.